Hello, this is a follow-up to our last video in which we got to try and play with the 50mm 1.0 by Fujifilm. And today, let's look at some of the photographs and uh, pixel peep a little <laughs> and maybe discuss just a tad, because it's not a full review, who this lens might be great for. Now, for starters, I found that it was interesting. I wanted to use the 50 millimeter with my uh, Fujifilm X-T3, and the Fujifilm folks were kind of saying, hey, we have X-T4s here to try. <laughs> and so they wanted me to use the 50 millimeter with the, F with the X-T4, which is a little newer camera and probably has a little snappier autofocus. So uh, I insisted that I use it on the X-T3, which is the camera that I have. I'm not going to buy an X-T4 just to see what the lens is like. So my results were by using the X-T3, not the X-T4, which is a newer camera because I don't own the X-T4. <laughs> so luckily uh, the gentleman in charge of the event had his dog there and I asked if I could photograph the dog and the dog was so awesome. She was just sitting there and she was like almost posing for me. So she was a great model. And looking at the back of the camera, I noticed of course the lens was very sharp. By zooming in, I could see the glassiness in her eyes. And the other thing that struck me as I was, I was photographing the dog, here's another shot of her at 1.0. Um, oh my God, she's got some eye crud there. <laughs> I found that uh, the autofocus was snappy because I was so used to the 56 1.2 and those of you that have that lens know that the, the lens sort of does that Fujifilm bounce when it focuses. So it kind of does a little pumping before it locks on. So what was impressive about the 50 millimeter 1.0 was its ability to just grab on quick. So but it did focus snappier than the 1.2. So sharp right away and the autofocus was quicker than the 1.2. This is also the 50 millimeter 1.2. She was sticking her tongue out, so I had to take a quick shot. But uh, again, you could see she was very, this is a, you could see her leash is probably about, um, you know, two meters, six feet from that wall. And uh, the leash is completely blurry. And I focus, I use the single focus point on her eye and uh, her nose is completely out of focus. Now, if you're photographing dogs, you usually don't want this much bokeh, like you don't want their nose to be um, out of focus. So you would stop down to F4, 5.6. So dog photography, well, this kind of dog is probably not the best example. Now, how much bokeh you get, of course, is uh, related to how distant you are. So I backed up a little bit here so that you know we could get a little bit more in focus. And same thing, her eye is completely glassy delicious and uh, she is super sharp. So the lens obviously is sharp, of course. Now, the 50 millimeter F2 was uh, pretty sharp. It wasn't as sharp, of course, as the 50 millimeter 1.0 but it's a lot cheaper for once. And I was pretty impressed. Here's the 50 millimeter F2. Here's a nice headshot with the 50 millimeter F2. And her eye is glassy and sharp, um, albeit not as super sharp as the 1.0, but good enough, especially for the price. This lens is only about 450 bucks compared to $1,000 more. Uh, so that's pretty interesting. I've never used the 50 millimeter F2 and I was very impressed, especially, you know, using the 56, which is like zzz, 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 and uh, has beautiful bokeh, but this 50 millimeter F2 was so silent, quick to focus, super sharp, weather resistant. So I'm gonna take another look at this lens because it impressed me just from putting it on and taking a couple of photos here. Oh, here's another F2 one. Look how sharp this one is here. Her eye is super glassy and delicious. You could actually see me inside her eyes there. You could see her little hairs here. So that's a one-to-one -one pushing in. Oh, here's another one, 50 millimeter F2. And uh, great lens, man. I was really impressed with the 50 millimeter F2. As you can tell, I took a lot of shots with it here. Uh, this is the F2. This is, I, I feel like I was approaching, uh, you know, I gave her a pet here, so she's a little bit more comfortable. And uh, let me zoom in so you can see how sharp, look at that, look at her around her eyes, how sharp everything is. And these, by the way, are all JPEGs, uh, slightly edited. I usually just give a little bit of an exposure boost, shadow boost, but pretty much straight out of camera. Okay, not exactly the same size, but uh, 1.0 on the left and F2 on the right. And you could see that the wall is blurrier in the background. Um, 
So let's try the 1.2. Okay, and here's the 56 millimeter 1.2. And uh, man, super sharp, of course. Look how crispy her eye looks. Nose is not, not sharp at all. And uh, again, the wall back there. Again, this has to do with distance. Let's back up just a little bit so you could see the wall is blurry back there. Her leash is blurry. And um, again, if I was really photographing this dog for a client, I would not shoot this uh, this close at 1.2. And, oh, they, they, boo, boo, they, boo, boo. Okay, F2 and 1.2. I feel like the F2 is a little sharper and crisper and a little bit nice contrast. Not to say that the F2 is not as good because it's really good. Uh, here's the F2 and 1.2. They're both sharp. No one's gonna notice anything. Any, anything we're doing in this video, no one is gonna notice except us, okay? <laughs> Just so you know that. And back to the 51.0. So this is the reason why the 1.0 is exciting is because you can move back and have the whole dog in focus, but the foreground, you see the grass here in the front is completely gone and the background is completely gone. And so it's great with people too. The 1.0 gives you that shallow depth of field. Okay, and then we went out with a model, and this is where I was very excited because this is how I shoot. I shoot a lot of portraits, and I love the 85 focal length on full frame, and I love that look, that sort of medium format-y sort of background is, you know, you got a full length portrait of someone and the background is blurry. So the 50 millimeter 1.0 was able to do that. All right, so this is straight out of camera and look at the creamy bokeh in the background. And that's the separation that I like getting from a full length portrait. This is straight out of camera and then editing it to look a little bit more aged. All right, so this is also straight out of camera and then edited. So I love this filmic look, which is fantastic. All right, then I set the camera to continuous highs to see what kind of burst I could get with someone walking and um, the first attempt, she took off, uh, she was just a little too fast for the camera. So it seemed like focus was always back focusing just a tad. Uh, so I had her walk, this was the first test. They were all just a little off, so I had her walk a little slower and then I was getting better success. Just about every photo was in focus. So know the limitations of camera, lens combo, and you know, 1.0 is definitely a sliver of autofocus. Uh, so it did a decent job at Tractor here. Here's just a grab so you, you, know, you can zoom in and see that she's sharp there. Uh, so I would say for the most part, if she was walking at a normal pace, the camera was great. The first time she was going nuts and it could not keep up with her. Okay, this is straight out of camera. And I've been, you know, I saw this in a couple of the other reviews I've seen that the, um, the bokeh in the corners is like cat eye or football bokeh. I'm not a super fan of that kind of bokeh. I, I like, you know, of course, the very round bokeh. And uh, this is just, you know, a product of the physics of the lens. This is the bokeh that it makes. Um, so you're just going to have to, you know, like that football cat eye bokeh instead of the pretty round, uh, you know, the round Christmas light balls that you usually get with most lenses. And that's the edited image. And so let's slap the 56 1.2 on there. Let's see straight out of camera 1.2. And here's the 56 1.2, but unfortunately like a moron, I bumped the aperture ring, so it says 1.6. So we won't compare the two, but you could see how sharp the 56 1.2 at 1.6 is. And uh, we'll discuss should you upgrade or not in a second. I really don't think I need to review this lens. I think I already got a good feel for it. And one of the things I noticed when I came back home, which I couldn't see in the back of my camera, is um, that the fringing, the purple fringing, is a thing with this lens at 1.0. So this is pretty common with most lenses. Um, but you, it's it's and it's an easy fix in, in any editing program. But there is purple fringing, and I noticed it around her zipper a lot and stuff like that. So uh, again, full body portraits. This is what it's great for. This is straight out of camera, no editing, and um, I just love it for that. I just love it for full body portraits like this one here. This is straight out of camera. This one is edited to have, be a little bit more filmic. But here you could see the sharpness. You could also see a little purple fringing there. Something you're gonna have to worry about. So it's cool, the background just goes to, that's how you gotta use this lens. You gotta have some kind of background. And uh, like for example, here you could use the 50 F2 because the window is right behind her. So it's great when there's a lot of depth, there's something way behind her. 
Now let's zoom into her face. Like this is what pic where pixel peepers go wrong, you know, and start to blame Lightroom and all this stuff. If I zoom into her face, the lens doesn't look so sharp or clear. Neither do, neither does her hair. But it's because she's only like a little smidge on the sensor. Okay, um, there aren't that many pixels there. So if you fill up your subject using more of the sensor, that means you, you know, if you're doing a headshot, you don't want to crop later, you want to fill the frame with the face. Here we fill her face more megapixels. We actually use more of the sensor. And here you could see all the little lines on her lips. You could see her, all the crystal clear eyelashes and her hair and that stuff. So just think about that too. If you're, if you're pixel peeping and you don't know why your images are not as sharp, uh, it may be that the subject is too small in the frame. You know, you're zooming in and, you know, the person's too small in there. 50 millimeter 1.0, how not to use this lens? She's on a brick wall. Why would I shoot 1.0? I did shoot 1.0, so you can see. <laughs> and uh, this would be a good time to stop down to 5.6 or so. So I moved her to the edge of the curve, and this is where the 1.0 shows off. Just separates her from the background with all that bokeh. Here she is on her phone. But these were some of my favorite portraits too, with the background and the glass, uh, you know, being out of focus, that's straight out of camera. And then I put a nice little film edit on there. And uh, it just has a, that quality, that quality you're looking for in your portraits. I think this is the question that a lot of people are asking is, you know, do I need to upgrade? So when I shot this photograph, using the 5.0, I framed her up and shot it and I saw a beautiful bokeh. Then I changed to the 56 and I noticed that it's 56, so I had to back up a little bit. And um, distance does affect how much bokeh you get. So the 50, you can get closer when you're framing things. With the 56, you have to get further back. Uh, but you'd be hard pressed if you're looking at both of these to really tell the difference. No one's really gonna tell the difference between these two. And I go back and forth between 1.0 and 1.6, and I'm looking at the bokeh balls, and it's like, who cares kind of thing? Who cares? Look at the, the book is a little smoother here. Here it's a little, you know, a little bit more defined. <laughs> By the way, look at her, look at her zipper here. Look at the, the chromatic aberration on the 1.0, purple fringe. And the, I'm surprised the 1.2 did not, my copy anyway, didn't have as much purple fringe in this shot anyway. There are shots where <laughs> it does have purple fringing. So that's one of the questions is, if you own the 56 1.2, do you need to upgrade? Well, it depends how you shoot. I think if you're more of a professional and have been waiting for an upgrade to the 56 autofocus and weather sealing, and you have the money because your business is making money, then the 50 millimeter is a great upgrade. Um, if you're a casual shooter with the Fujifilm system, like I am, photographing kids, going out on the street, autofocus is fine enough. Uh, you don't need to upgrade. The 56, just to me, is like, pff, I love that lens. It's beautiful. And the 50 for its price, uh, being a Fujifilm hobbyist, uh, is not justified. If I was a Fujifilm pro shooting weddings or uh, maybe shooting um, uh, portraits, then I would upgrade. But we're on all different situations. Some people have a lot more money. Some people have less money. So you have to evaluate your own situation for me, the upgrade for how I shoot is not worth it based on this image alone. With that said, as the images came up on Lightroom, I kept drooling over their dreamy sort of filmic quality. And um, if you don't have the 56 and you're thinking 56 versus 50, then that's a different story. Um, if you do have the funds, I would get the 50 millimeter 1.0 uh, just because, you know, get the best, <laughs> you know, if you have the funds. If you don't have the funds and the 56 1.2 is dang good enough, you're gonna get similar results. Um, it'll be a little slower to focus, uh, but if you just are shooting someone standing here laughing hilariously, <laughs> hilariously here for the portraits, uh, the 56 1.2 will be good enough. Full body portraits, foreground bokeh, background bokeh, this is exactly what this lens is made to do and I love it. If you're shooting against brick walls or graffiti walls, you don't need the 1.0. You could shoot this with almost any lens. Here's a little bit of distance too, foreground element, background element, this is where the lens works best and where I found I had the most fun with it. Just separating the subject from the background 
And um, this was an example of quick to focus. I basically held the camera with single focus point and I wanted that gentleman there uh, to be framed by all this yellow and uh, it grabbed and shot, just one quick shot there. And I wonder if the 56 1.2 would have been able to grab this quick, not looking center focus point shot. You know, <laughs> I feel like I've done that in the past and I've gotta, with the 56 1.2, concentrate a little bit more. 1.0 on the right, 1.2 on the left, looking at bokeh. Um, <laughs> again, you can't, you can't tell, man. Uh, look at the door. It's slightly blurrier, of course, on the 1.0, but not a by a much. Let me know if you're getting it or what do you think about it. I mean, um, don't go bankrupt. <laughs> All right, I'll see you guys next time. Mm -hmm.